Japan Charlie Lima Station. What's the name there? Name here is Jim, and I'm in Jeffrey Hills, Florida. I'm going next door to Tampa. All right, Jim. Uh, gosh, uh, come back and tell me about your antenna system, and I'm going to check out the uh, Georgia SDR and uh, see if I can get a better copy on you, Roger. Yeah, okay, I got a... Yeah, okay, I got a... Uh, I got a, uh, a dipole. That's 35 feet in the air, running east to west. With uh, the dipole multi-band with uh, uh, two resonators, one on each side, and uh, running a... Uh, uh, an ICOM 706 Mark 2 g through a 922 Alpha. Yes, and as I thought, uh, your signal is very beautiful uh, into the uh, Georgia SDR, and, and I'm picking you up uh, probably about uh, 8 to 10 dB over on the uh, Georgia SDR. Roger? On the uh, Georgia SDR, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. I'll give you a signal report and uh, you come back. I, I just turned this radio on. I haven't turned it on in a long time, so I thought I'd give it a little bit of work. Over. Roger. Now, why haven't you been turning that radio on? Are you keeping company with uh, another radio? Keeping company with uh, another radio? Yeah, I'm cheating on it. Over. <laughs> it knows it. It knows it. <laughs> it knows it. It knows it. Oh, yeah, well, it waved at me uh, today, so I thought I'd try it. Uh, so I also hooked it up to the 922, the Kenwood TL922 Alpha amplifier, just to try it out and see if it would work. Roger, and uh, how much uh, are you you're running right now? How are you you're running right now? Uh, about 700 watts. Roger, Roger. That's that's a nice little uh, a chunk of uh, power there. And uh, what was the antenna you're using? Antenna you're using? Yeah, that's a dipole. It's up at 35 feet, miles east to west. Uh, it's an alpha delta dipole, multi-band dipole, 80, uh, 80, 40 meter uh, antenna. Uh, Roger that. Roger that. Well, you're 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 good to uh, resonate uh, uh, or radiate actually uh, north and south of, over that uh, east and west uh, uh, antenna run, Roger. I do pretty good all the way, all the way around, believe it or not. Oh, Roger that. But if you were to do a field strength meter reading, uh, you would see the intensity uh, shift uh, uh, to the uh, broadband uh, to your antenna versus uh, off the ends, Roger. Versus uh, off the ends, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Yeah, well, we, uh, we're pretty happy. We can't put it any other way, so we're stuck. <laughs> Roger. Well, you're just uh, stuck in a in a beautiful way because it's exactly the in, the way uh, you should run that antenna. You know, because uh, uh, Florida is a, a long state there, and uh, so you want to be going uh, east and west radiation patterns, Roger. Uh, east and west radiation patterns, Roger. I'm sorry, north and south, north and south radiation patterns. Not a lot that I north and south radiation patterns. makes it makes it, he do it that way, so. Uh, either that, I'd have two antennas. I'd have one east and west and one north and south. And, uh, but unfortunately, I can't do that. Roger. That's uh, entirely interesting, though. I've done that, and uh, oh, gosh, the signal strengths are, are tremendously variable. And that's a, probably about the best way to um, to uh, figure out uh, a directional antenna at uh, HF frequencies. You know, obviously, it's tough to build a uh, a, a Yagi antenna at uh, HF frequencies, but you can get uh, a lot of uh, signal strength uh, diversity by running one. Uh, North and south, and the other east and west, Roger. South and south, and the other east and west, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Well, you're you're very tuned up to this. I'm not. I'm a kind of a I'm a kind of an appliance operator, and I do I do a little bit of a science once in a while. Oh, Roger. Well, you know, you com combine them all, and the more proficient you get at the one, the more proficient you get at the other, you know, <laughs> and they all go go hand in hand. Uh, we are recording now, uh, and uh, if you would like to hear what your radio sounds like, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9, Victor Kilo Victor, that uh, will take you to our QSO Vlog page. We're running now about 1180 some odd recorded QSOs. You'll be looking for one specifically entitled Mike Group Air Check 73. 20. My group bear check 7320. Today's date, Roger. 7320. Today's date, Roger. Yeah, Roger.
Roger, Roger, got it. Okay, thank you very much. I'll try to see if I can do that. I'll go on YouTube and see if I can find it. Roger. Now, it will take us a couple of days to get it uploaded to uh, YouTube. So uh, after 48 hours, uh, it, should, it will be there, um, should be there. And a lot of times we do it a lot earlier than that, but uh, just, uh, you know, uh, just so we can uh, always uh, make the deadline, we say 48 hours, Roger. We say 48 hours, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Just to let you know, I just, I just get done building an antenna from Create, and uh, it's a wide periodic, and I just get done building it. That's going to go up in the air in the next two weeks. Okay, now, is that for HF or VHF or what? For HF or VHF or what? It's for six meters, two meters, full party, and uh, other, uh, other uh, VHF bands. Uh, Roger that. Roger that. Well, what's your, what's your reflector length? Sure. What's your reflector length? Ah, uh, gee, I, uh, I don't know. Roger, Roger. Usually, the reflector uh, represents the, uh, the lowest frequency. It, it uh, works for all the others above it, but uh, it uh, usually is uh, ten percent greater than the uh, lowest frequency that you're going to run with it. That's the longest one in the back. That's the longest one in the back. Well, that's about five feet long. Roger, Roger. Well, that's a, that's a nice little antenna there. And the thing about, uh, you know, that antenna, it uh, doesn't have a lot of gain in one specific area, but it does show directionality. So a lot of times... Um, uh, directionality is is uh, a trade-off to uh, to gain, Roger. Trade-off to uh, to gain, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. That's why I got a rotator. Oh uh, yeah, you you're gonna put a rotor on it, Roger. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna put a rotor on it, Roger. I'm oh, sorry. What was I double with you? What was that? I said you are gonna put a rotor on it, Roger. I said you are gonna put a rotor on it, Roger. Oh yeah, I got a rotor. I already I bought a brand new rotor for it. I just gotta put it up on the pole. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Well, that's the, that's the thing. Uh, I uh, used to uh, build a bunch of uh, uh, VHF and UHF Yaggies. I uh, just, uh, the problem was I never decommissioned them. The next one I built, I always compared to the old one. So pretty soon I had uh, 38 antennas around the house. So it became a little, uh, you know, difficult for the wife to uh, put up with it. So I have now started to give her back her, her uh, backyard and her side yard and her front yard. <laughs> and uh, so I am uh, uh, decommissioning uh, some antennas. I decommissioned a, um, a full wave uh, loop antenna for 10 meters. So it's 38 feet uh, loop. Uh, it's actually a rectangular loop, uh, uh, 10 foot on the horizontal, 8 foot on the vertical on a rotor, a tin uh, mounted uh, 10 foot uh, off the ground uh, on the shadow roof, <laughs> her shadow roof. And uh, so I did uh, decommission that. So now, uh, you know, she can look out and see her shadow roof and, and no antenna there. So I, I feel good about that. And then uh, I had uh, two, uh, two VHF uh, 12 uh, element uh, Yaggies that I also decommissioned, and one uh, 32 element UHF uh, Yagi that I decommissioned. So uh, we're we're coming along, Roger. So uh, we're we're coming along, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. I got one other antenna besides this one, and the uh, log periodic. I've got a gap type DX vertical, and that up at 20 feet. That works really good. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I hope you have them both on an AB switch so you can switch between your, um, your horizontal and your vertical. Your, uh, your horizontal and your vertical? Uh, no, I don't. I, uh, I switch them by just uh, manually taking the, the connectors and putting them on. I, I, I had them on AB switches, but I had a lightning strike and it went right through the AB switch. Uh, Roger that. Well, you know, uh, any time it lightnings, the thing is, uh, uh, if you have an AV switch, you just take the output of the AV switch and disconnect it uh, from your uh, radio. So now you have uh, disconnected both antennas, 
by uh, taking it, disconnecting the output uh, uh, lead from your AV switch. And you know, um, uh, HF frequencies are not uh, critical, and you can use uh, just a uh, almost a standard uh, uh, two-position uh, uh, switch, you know, toggle switch. Uh, if I mean, you know, if push come to shove, uh, just put that uh, toggle switch in there and, and wire it because uh, at HF frequencies, uh, you're not going to be having any loss. Like, you know, if you were to, to uh, try to put a simple switch in a, um, a UHF uh, antenna AV switch, uh, it, you know, it could be difficult because uh, you could run into a lot of loss that way. But uh, just at HF frequencies, you can just use a two-position two, uh, uh, toggle switch uh, in there, Roger. Roger, Roger. Well, it jumped. Uh, I had everything disconnected, and it jumped. Uh, it jumped 12 inches. The act did. Well, well, well. You know uh, what I think is really neat. Uh, some folks take a, a a glass jar, you know, like a canning glass jar, one of those big ones, and they just put the end of the coax after they disconnected from wherever it was going. They just put that end inside the uh, glass jar. Roger. In the uh, glass jar, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Uh, I had done that up in upstate New York, and uh, it, instead of uh, going out the end, it went out, the, it went out through the uh, side, through the insulation. It went through the glass. No, it went through the rubber, rubber called the, uh, the insulation on the on the cable. Roger. Now, were you using? Uh, uh, 58 or uh, RG8 or like a half inch stuff or quarter inch stuff? Like a half inch stuff or quarter inch stuff? Uh, it was quarter inch stuff and it, it, it just blew a hole right through the, uh, it's right through the uh, outside uh, covering. Roger. You'd probably have a better dielectric uh, insulation uh, using a half inch uh, uh, coax than uh, than quarter inch uh, I found uh, you know although in my younger days uh, I did um, uh, when I went to the um, SV220 I until then I'd been running 100 watts so I'd been using uh, like uh, RG8U or 6, RG6U and uh, that was good for 100 watts and it was even good for KW uh, but uh, once I was tuning up and I stayed uh, too long at the farm and I did find out that uh, RG6U turns into spaghetti at 1100 watts, Roger. At 1100 watts, Roger. Roger, Roger. Well, I'll tell you, I learned a lesson about lightning. I've been struck four times, not me, but my equipment has, and uh, I've lost a lot of equipment. So, and I gained some new equipment, had some repaired. So I've, uh, I, I've done everything you could possibly do to try to avoid getting a lightning strike. I've been hit four times, so I, I hope there's no more. Roger. Sounds like that dark cloud may be following you, Roger. Dark cloud may be following you, Roger. Yeah, Roger, Roger. Okay, I want to say seven threes. My wife is cooking up a super meal, and i got to go get it and see how she's doing. So I'm going to say seven threes. Nice being up with you. I'll look for that uh, little... Uh, taping and uh, thanks a lot I appreciate it you have a nice night W4JCL Roger Jim and I'm coming to your house for dinner you, you don't know it yet but I'll be there in about 20 minutes <laughs> that's race to you sir have a great afternoon beautiful weekend you're talking to you uh, then gosh uh, it's three minutes past five and we have turned into a pumpkin so we are going to get out of here uh, we've appreciated uh, the afternoon and for those that uh, managed to participate uh, if you go to YouTube and do a call letter search for Kilo Charlie 9 Victor Kilo Victor that should take you to our Kiso Vlog network and uh, our Kiso Vlog page and uh, on that page uh, you'll be looking for today's uh, our Kiso which is entitled My Group Air Check 7320 My Group Air Check 7320 today's date so uh, with that uh, we're going to jump out of here we will return the frequency to normal amateur use and this is a kc9 vkv clear